but this in essence is what we do to the connector. So if, you, if we were to cross section uh, any of our, our makeup of our flanges, this is what it would look like if it was a two groove solution. Now, simply if it was a single groove, we would have two metal to metal seals. If it's a three groove, it's six, I guess very, very simplistic. But how does it work? Well, ultimately we're taking the two pieces of material, whether it be the flange and the pipe, and we're, we're plastically deforming it. So um, we're working on the elasticity of the two materials. Now, what you can see in the deformation there of the pipe, uh, where we've actually uh, pushed it into the groove, the pipe is ultimately trying to straighten back out. That's it. It's working. It's at the molecules in the, in the material is trying to straighten back out. And we have ever so slightly dilated that flange where it's clamping back down on the pipe. So ultimately, the weakest component of this connection is the pipe itself. Now, under a bend and torsion or axial load, what will happen is the pipe will start to twist and give up before the actual connection from the metal to metal seals. Now, what, this is a good example actually on here to show you the, the, the bell zona. Now, um, if Don can just put his cursor up around next to the, uh, the neck area of the flange, you can see um, where the potential of the bell zona, or if we didn't put bell zona, the ingress of fluids could go to that top seal at the neck area. But then at the actual raised face section of the flange, you can only just make out the lip. Just in there, that's where we would also put that beta bell zona that we talked about earlier that will prevent any crevice corrosion to any of the ceiling points. But there is a huge amount of redundancy built into this connectors, having four metal to metal seals.